Hey everyone, this is Tony. Um, so I have three pawpaws in front of me here, along with um, my kitten, Aurora. And uh, these are three varieties that I got from my own trees this year that produced. Um, they are Shenandoah, Allegheny, and Wabash. And today I'm just going to do a, a short taste test video for you just to let you know what they look like, what they taste like, and what I think of them. Um, so these are all three um, Peterson varieties. Um, so they were developed by uh, Neil Peterson, who I mentioned in the Papa Guide video. He is um, a Papa breeder and a plant geneticist, and he developed seven varieties of Papa. Um, these three, Shenandoah, Allegheny Wabash, as well as Susquehanna, Potomac, Rappahannock, and Tallahatchie. Um, so let's take a look at this one. This is Shenandoah. Um, these are all fairly ripe. It's been at least two weeks since I've picked these. So these have just been stored in the fridge. So you can see they keep a pretty long time. Um, you know, if you pick them uh, before they fall off the tree. Um, I mean, these, this one's still pretty green even on the back side or on the bottom. Um, so, uh, let's cut into this one. This is Shenandoah. And this is um, a larger variety. Um, this is, it's also a pretty mild variety of pawpaw. Stem part's kind of tough. And my knife's not very sharp, so... There we go. Alright, so I cut this the whole way around, and I'm just going to twist it and open it up. If that works, it's pretty ripe, so... Alright, there we go. A bunch of pulp came out from that side, but... You can see that. It is a lighter colored variety. The pulp is a lighter color. Uh, so it, it's, this is pretty typical for it to be like kind of a pale yellow. Um, it smells really nice. It's it's mild. It definitely has a milder smell. Um, it's not that seedy. I think this variety is uh, the amount of seed per for the to the rest of the fruit. The ratio is about six percent. So that's six percent seed and 94% pulp and skin. So, I'm just gonna taste. Well, I'll give it a scoop here, I'll taste this. So, it scoops out really easily. It's very, you can see it's kind of um, custard-like. You know, it kind of scoops almost like ice cream or, um, or like a pudding, but it's very, um, has a nice soft, creamy texture. I'll taste this. Mm. It's so good. Um, just <laughs> really, really good. It's sweet. It's, um, it's less sweet than, um, you know, other varieties can be. Um, but it's still pretty sweet to me. Um, definitely has a milder flavor that's kind of, um, uh, it has a little bit of a tropical flavor, but it's, it's so mild, it's, it's almost like a, like a tropical pudding, like a tropical vanilla pudding. Definitely has a little bit of a vanilla flavor to it. And then it also has, you know, some tropical flavors as well. There's definitely a little bit of, um, a little bit of banana, um, a little bit of, like, a tutti fruity type of flavor. Um, all pawpaws kind of have a general pawpaw flavor, um, that, you know, it's hard to compare to any other fruit. It just kind of tastes like pawpaw, but, uh, usually I, I describe it as kind of like a 
droppable tasting or uh, kind of tutti fruity or sometimes even bubblegum like if it's a really rich tasting pop up. Um, but this this variety, um, I mean, a lot of varieties when they're underripe can have a bit of more of a pineapple type of flavor to it. I think this type does a little bit when it's on the underripe side. Um, yeah, maybe even like a slight coconut type of flavor. There's just that kind of creamy tropical flavor in there. Um, but it's, it's a really fantastic variety. Um, this one has been maybe my favorite this year of these three. Um, it's just so pleasant and easy to eat. You know, even if I'm, you know, having stomach issues, uh, you know, uh, nauseous or something like that, it's, it's just easier to eat like a mild variety like this. Um, and I really like the texture of it too. Very smooth, very creamy. So let's move on now to Allegheny. Oh, also, if you're seeing a cat in this video, oh, there she is. This is, see, she likes Papa. This is, this is my cat, Aurora. Uh, well, I guess she's, she's a kitten. She's about, uh, what are you, like five months old now? But, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, God, I might, I have, I have to put this away so she doesn't eat the whole thing. Okay, on to Allegheny. See, the stem was still attached to that one. Here, I'll cut this open. And Allegheny is, um, it is smaller, generally, um, than these other two. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know, you, you love it, huh? But, smaller variety, it's more yellow in color. You can see there. It's also a little bit more seedy. Um, but, uh, come on. Anyway, um, Allegheny is, a uh, Smaller fruited, smaller fruited variety, um, but a very productive variety. Oh, you moved the camera, didn't you? Or did I move the plate? Okay, so it's um, smaller fruited, um, a very productive variety. Um, it is a little bit more seedy. I think it's supposedly 8% seed. Um, compared to 6% of Shenandoah and Wabash. Um, uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put this slice away so I can just hold the other slice. And, uh, show this. Alright, so, like I said, it's a productive variety. Um, it needs the the tree is overproductive. It needs to be thinned. Don't eat the stem. It needs to be thinned, um, or the fruits need to be thinned out pretty heavily because of how productive it is, or else the fruit tends to be small. Um, and I did thin this very heavily. Um, I think the tree produced like like 62 fruit overall. Um, and Shenandoah produced uh, 31, um, so it's about twice as productive, but the fruits are about a little less than half the size of Shenandoah. The average of, of these was um, about a quarter of a pound, whereas Shenandoah was a little over half a pound. Um, so uh, this type tends to be um, more flavorful and sweeter than Shenandoah. <laughs> Um, and the flavor's um, a little more complex. It's kind of hard for me to describe the flavor of this variety, um, just because it seems to have a nice mixture of different flavors in it. 
Let me taste this one here. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's stronger flavored than Shenandoah, but it's still not a really strong flavored variety. It's probably kind of middle of the road. Um, it's sweet. It's um, got a very nice blend of those flavors I tend to taste in Papa, like the banana, the melon, um, the tutti frutti, bubblegum type of flavor. They're all there. Um, in kind of a well-balanced form. So none of them are um, overshadowing the other flavors. With the wild pawpaws that I taste around this area, um, banana tends to be the predominant flavor of those varieties. And it kind of overshadows other flavors, especially like the, you know, that tutti frutti bubblegum flavor and the, the cantaloupe flavor. Um, the wild ones often have bitterness to them as well. That's what's nice about these varieties, is they don't have that bitter aftertaste or those bitter flavors. Um, and so, <laughs> yeah, she she seems to really like pawpaws. Although she kind of likes eating pretty much any food that's in front of her face. So, let me put this one away. <laughs> I'll bring all these fruits back later so I can compare them side by side, but, um, yeah, and so, uh, all pawpaws, even these named varieties, kind of vary in flavor depending on ripeness, not just the variety. Um, so when they're a little more underripe, um, they kind of have a, almost like a fresher, greener flavor. There's a little bit of, like, a pineapple taste to them. Um, if they're really underripe, they can taste kind of bleachy. Um, so you don't want to eat them when they're, like, really underripe, when they're still green and mostly hard. Um, but usually when they're just kind of slightly underripe and still fully green, but soft, um, they have some kind of a pineapple-y flavor to them. But they're not quite as rich. They don't have more, um, as much of that, like, tutti-frutti flavor to them yet. And when they get darker like this, you can see this one's almost fully brown, this Wabash. Still has a little bit of green on it, but, um, uh, so when they get darker like this, they tend to have a more, there's, they get like, um, a burnt sugar type of flavor. Um, so to some people it may taste kind of like caramel or caramel. Um, but to me it's kind of like a burnt sugar flavor or almost like a, slightly burnt marshmallow. And with the wild ones, um, with that flavor comes a lot of bitterness. But luckily with the with the name varieties, there isn't much bitterness with that. Um, so some people like that flavor, some people don't. Um, I don't as much just because I associate it with those wild fruits because I've eaten so many over the years. So kind of associate it with the bitterness. So, <laughs> um, but it's still good. Um, I think my, my paddle will just change as I eat more better tasting pawpaws. But anyway, this is Wabash. It's a very spherical fruited variety. Um, I think it tends to be a bit more strongly flavored. Um, I'm still... haven't had that many of this variety. My tree produced, I think, ten total. What was that? What are you doing? Um, okay. Um, so yeah, my tree produced about 10 total fruits, and I'm still kind of assessing it, seeing what it's like. And it's its first year, um, it's had some issues with the seeds. Um, some of the seeds have been, um, it's almost like they aborted, and the, the, or they didn't develop properly, or the inside of the seeds or the endosperm kind of formed outside of the shell, or the shell didn't form correctly over the full seed. And that's not great. You don't want to eat any part of the seed. So if any, like, compounds eat within the seed, diffuse into the pulp, that can make you slightly sick. Um, that can make you pretty nauseous. Um, 
you know, I'm not real sick in a bad way or anything. Um, you just get pretty nauseous and have to go to the bathroom a lot for about half a day. But, okay, here's... Oh, my gosh, you come in, too. You can see it's um, darker in color than the other two. Um, let's see, that seed looks like it didn't form quite properly. I don't know, it looks kind of weird. Um, but you can see that maybe parts of that seed came out in the fruit there, which I don't want to eat. Um, so I'll just scoop that out and eat around it. It seems like, you know, right here, um, there's a little bit deformed outside of the shell, and I definitely don't want to eat that. It should stay attached. Same with down in here. There's a little bit of the seed, the endosperm, the white part of the, the seed that's in there that I don't want to eat. So I'll just scoop around that. Um, okay, let me put this one in container so that she can't get to it. Alright, so, yeah, it smells pretty ripe. It smells definitely like, uh, kind of like burnt sugar or like a toasted marshmallow or burnt marshmallow. Um, so we'll taste this. Wabash tends to get, um, brown really quickly. You know, I still have plenty of, like, Shenandoahs and Alleghenies that, um, in the fridge that uh, I've had in the fridge for, like, three, maybe four weeks now, and um, some of them are still green. Um, whereas the Wabash just, it was green when I put it in the fridge, but um, it just turned brown really quick. Um, well, let's taste this one. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty sweet. I think this is the, the sweetest of these three varieties. Yeah, it's not bitter at all. Um, the texture is it's more firm than the other two varieties. Um, almost like a like an avocado type of texture. <laughs> Excuse me as I struggle to eat this fruit while my cat tries to do the same. Um, yeah, it has a firmer texture. Um, texture may be slightly gritty. Um, very slightly gritty. It's not that noticeable. No. It's just not quite as smooth as the other two. But, yeah, I'm not getting a lot of complexity from this one. It's, um, definitely has a, like a caramel type of taste. Um, I mean, it's a, it still has a little bit of that pop-off flavor. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit fruity. Um, need a little more of this. This one's been hard for me to describe. Yeah, it's just really sweet. Um, sweet. Um, a little bit fruity. Not tasting much melon. Maybe a little bit of banana. Um, a little bit of a tutti fruity flavor. And a lot of like a caramel flavor. Um, okay, let me get the others in display them out for you. Also, here's a look at the, um, the seeds of these three varieties. Um, Shenandoah, Allegheny, Wabash. You can see, um, Allegheny's, uh, the seeds are a bit smaller. Shenandoah's are more elongated. This Wabash seems to be, um, you know, rounder, wider. Okay, so here are these three varieties next to each other, so you can see 
I know the interior of the fruits, Shenandoah and Allegheny and Wabash. You can see Shenandoah is obviously lighter, uh, Wabash is obviously darker. And Aurora is obviously still hungry. Yeah. Okay, so lastly, um, uh, for varieties, I do want to mention um, uh, which types I would recommend if you're looking to buy pawpaws. Um, I think any Peterson variety should be good. Um, you know, he had an extensive breeding program. They're all pretty high quality from what I've heard. I don't hear much about Rappahannock, um, but the others all have a really good reputation. Um, uh, Susquehanna is um, a stronger tasting papa. It tends to have more of that, like, tropical, tutti-frutti, bubblegum flavor um, that some people might call, like, mango or, you know, just tropical tasting. Um, so that's definitely one I would recommend getting if you like, you know, a stronger tasting papa, stronger fruit. Um, Shenandoah's hard to beat if you like a, you know, if you want a milder tasting papa. You know, if you're not sure if people are going to like it or that you yourself will like it, Shenandoah's a pretty safe bet. Um, let's see, the Kentucky State University has three varieties. Um, that um, were developed using their, their breeding program. So I would definitely recommend any of those. They all have a good reputation. Um, they're KSU Atwood, KSU Benson, and KSU Chappelle. Um, I think Chappelle may have been bred from Susquehanna. Um, and it, it's supposedly, Chappelle and Benson are supposedly more richly tasting pawpaws, whereas Atwood may be on the milder side. I haven't tasted any of those, though. Um, but um, I would definitely recommend those. Um, Chappelle, I think, may be the pawpaw to get. Um, for, for the varieties that are out right now, it seems like, you know, just everyone raves about it who has tasted it. You know, it supposedly tastes really good. It's supposed to be a really vigorous growing variety. It's supposed to be super productive. Um, Kentucky State University is really good at developing varieties that are, it seems like they, they focus on um, productivity and vigor in their trees, so um, those, are, those are nice treats to have. Um, and then there's also, um, uh, there's, there's a breeder named Jerry Lehman who um, developed several varieties. Um, a lot of them are numbered, there are some that are named. Um, I, I think I may have tasted some at the Ohio Festival, but they weren't labeled. Um, and they have a good reputation. Um, they've won contests at the Ohio Festival for several years, um, you know, for like best tasting papa or largest papa. His varieties, for, for several years, they kind of dominated that competition. Um, so his varieties are a good bet. Um, I know a few of the names of his types are Maria's Joy, um, Jerry's Big Girl and um, Benny's Favorite. There may be one called Layman's Delight, but that might just be a persimmon. I know there's a persimmon called Layman's Delight. Um, not sure about a papa. But those varieties are probably hard to find. Um, for the more common varieties, the ones that are... They're older varieties, um, but uh, they tend to be more common. Um, there are a lot. Um, I think some of the ones that are generally considered not as good are ones like Mitchell, Middletown, Wells, Wilson. Um, those are probably ones to avoid. I mean, I'm sure they can have good fruits. You know, every pop-up, they can have good fruits. I think just on average, they're not quite as good. They're generally considered smaller and seedier than some of the other, the newer better name varieties. Um, and a lot of the older ones can have like a bitter aftertaste to them, um, which isn't great. I don't care for that um, because that, that bitter aftertaste, it's not too bad when you're just eating a few fruits, but um, 
I don't know, sometimes I just don't care for it. And it does transfer into any desserts you make with the pawpaws. Here, let me see the cats. There's my other cat, Pippin. Um, so of the older varieties that I would recommend, um, I think the top ones are Overlease, NC1, and Mango. Um, all three of those, um, I only hear good things about them. Um, so th those are definitely ones I would recommend. They're easy to get, and um, uh, you know they're all known to be pretty good. I think Mango is kind of a softer textured variety. Um, NC1 does well in northern climates. I know people grow them in Ontario. I think that was that one was actually bred in Ontario. Um, I think it was bred from Overlease and Davis. Um, and there are two two other varieties that um, a lot of people like, but I, I do hear reports of them having a bit having a bitter aftertaste to them sometimes. And those are PA Golden and Sunflower. Um, so those are types that I might recommend as well, but maybe not as much as the others that I mentioned. Um, just because I, I think there are varieties that, that may have better flavor than those. I, I've tasted PA Golden, um, a few fruits of those, uh, you know, a couple of years ago at a festival. And um, it tasted kind of similar to wild varieties, um, had a lot of... Yeah, had some banana flavor, had some cantaloupe flavor, just a little bit of fruity flavor. Um, but it did have a bit of a bitter aftertaste to it. Um, and sunflower, uh, a lot of people like sunflower. Um, it's, uh, although some people describe it as having a bitter aftertaste as well, sometimes. I think you can get, you know, plenty of fantastic tasting fruits from, you know, either of those trees. Um, you know, they vary. Um, depending on ripeness and, uh, you know, just from one fruit to the next even, or one branch to the next. Um, but PA Golden is, um, an earlier ripening variety, so it has that going for it. Um, yeah, it's one of, probably one of the earliest, um, especially for the more commonly available types. Um. So it's a nice type to have. If you're in a zone where you're not sure if you can grow pawpaws or not because it's a bit too far north, um, P.A. Golden may be one to shoot for. Sunflower has, um, that's one of the few varieties that is self-pollinating. So you don't need another tree. So if you only, really only want one tree, sunflower might be the one to get um, because it can supposedly um, self-pollinate and produce fruit without another tree. I think Prima is the same way. Uh, Prima was bred from sunflower. That type is more available, more widely available in Europe because it was developed in Italy. Um, I don't know too much about how it tastes, but um, I know it was developed from, you know, a fairly large um, breeding program in Italy, so I imagine that it's pretty good. Um, what else? Um, I think that's about all I want to talk about for now. Um, if you have any more questions or are there any more, if there are any more varieties that you're curious about or that I can probably provide info on, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, oh, and I, I forgot to mention I have tasted... I have tasted Susquehanna and NC1 before. Um, NC1 was really good. Um, oh, they're both really good. NC1, they're both stronger tasting varieties. Um, NC1 is, um, it had a pretty strong banana flavor to it. So if you like, well, I only got to taste one. So that's not really much to go on for giving an opinion. But I really liked it. It didn't have a bitter aftertaste. It was a nice strong tasting papa. I would definitely recommend it. Um, Susquehanna is really great. I had several of those. Um, really rich tasting, a lot of um, 
you know, tutti fruity flavor to that variety. Firmer texture, definitely has a firmer texture, um, and more of a, a darker colored pulp, similar to Wabash. Um, all right, I think that's it now. <laughs> so thank you for watching the video, and this is me and Aurora saying goodbye, and I'll see you next time. Say bye.